Welcome back to our dice poker project. In the last video, we made our counts array so we could determine how many threes, fives, twos that we have. And so now we're going to write a method that goes into the counts array and checks to see um, what kind of dice hand we have. So after storing the dice hand, we are going to uh, write a method called determine dice hand. So we can say public void determine dice hand. And we're going to use a loop to go through the counts array. But since we're not interested in the first position, because that's position zero and there's no zero on the dice, we're going to say, we're going to start i at one. And then we're going to say as long as i is less than, um, you could either do um, six or you could do, um, it's better just to take counts dot length. And then i plus plus to count up. And then we're going to say if counts at i is equal to a 5, then we're going to go ahead and um, increase our 5 count variable. So we're going to make a variable for each of our counts. So we're going to have a 5 count plus plus. And so we'll, let me, we'll need to go up to the top here. And we need to make, so we need to make a variable for five count. So uh, now this is not the number on the die, but the number of items that we have uh, for a particular number. So you only have five die, so you can only have a total of five sixes or five fours. So we're going to make a variable called five count. So, and we'll do all the variables while we're at it. So we'll need one for one count. So private int one count in case we have any ones. And we'll go ahead and set it to zero. And then we'll say private int pair count because that's twos. And you could call it two count, but it's actually a pair in poker. We'll set that to zero, and we have private int triple count, and we'll set that to zero, and private int four count or quad count equal to zero, private int five count equal to zero. And this is actually four count. And so let's just do three count. And OK, so that's good. And then let's go back down to our evaluation method. So if counts at i is equal to five, we want to increase the five count. And then we want to do this also if it's we have four of a kind. So let's go ahead and put a five of a kind out here. Then we want to do this else if counts at i is equal to four, then we want to increase the four count. And then this is four of a kind. And then else if counts at i is equal to 3, then we have to increase 3 count, 3 of a kind. And then we want to do this else if it's a 2. And we want to increase the two count. So we have a pair. And we named that pair count, I believe. Let's go up and check. 
Yes, pair count. And then if we have any ones, let's so we'll have else if just go ahead and copy and paste here. And this is a one count, then we're gonna increase the one count variable. Okay, and that's it for going through the array. So this part of this method of dice hand goes through the count array. And I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Now what we want to do is once we've gone through the count array and we've counted the number of fives, fours, threes, and twos, we can then evaluate our hand. For instance, if we have one pair that might beat you know, someone who has nothing, everything is a one count, or if someone has um, three of a kind, that will probably, that beats um, two pairs. So if you need to know, I would suggest looking up the rules of poker to see um, what the hand values are, if you're not familiar with them. So what we're going to do here now is say if five count is equal to one, then our hand type, and we'll make a variable called hand type in a second, is going to be five of a kind. So we're going to need to go up to the top and make ourselves a variable called hand count, or hand type. So private string hand type. And we'll go ahead and set to an empty string for right now. So then we'll go ahead and copy this. And else if our four count is equal to one, then the hand type is four of a kind. And I'm listing these actually in order of who be two. So the top one is the best you can get. And then our three, if our three count is equal to one, then we could have three of a kind. But what we want to do first, um, let's change this. So one possibility is that we have three of a kind, but we could also have another pair in there and therefore have a full house. So what we need to do is use an, a nested conditional and check if we have a full house first. So if pair count happens to be equal to one, then our hand type is actually equal to a full house. Else, our hand type is equal to three of a kind. And then we just need one for um, two pairs. So else if the pair count is equal to two, then we have a hand type of two pairs. And else if the pair count is equal to one, then we have one pair. And then our last choice is if we don't have anything, we just have one counts, then we are going to, let's erase this part, then our hand type is, um, you rolled nothing this time. And we'll print out that to the user. And then what we need to do is, since we're already printing out 
um, these messages to the user and we have a type of string then all we have to do is return blank value so let's go ahead and save <coughs> 